DHCP is a network admin's best friend. We love that dynamic IP address assignment we get. And it's so great that actually we have two different ways we can run it in DHCP so we know some of these similarities and differences are going to show up on our exam. And we need to know, of course, for real world networking, the differences between stateful and stateless DHCP. Stateful DHCP, frankly, works almost the same way that DHCP for IP version 4 does. Almost the same. Same general operation. Everything I'm about to show you on the next couple screens is a review of DHCP for IP version 4 and tells you how stateful DHCP works. A host sends out that initial DHCP message and it's hoping to hear back from a DHCP server. That server gives the host a little bit of initial information and after another exchange of packets, the host is good to go. It's got its IP address and has some other information that it accepted from the server. And we know that address is good for the duration of the lease, and that lease is defined by the server. Four overall messages in the entire process, two sent by the client, two by the server. The client also receives the location of DNS servers, always helpful information to have. And the DHCP server keeps a database of information on clients that accept the IP addresses that it offers. Really, that's how DHCP works in IP version 4, and that's how stateful DHCP for IP version 6 works. Now, there are some differences we knew there would be, including the names of three of the DHCP packets. And in case you've been using the acronym DORA to remember the order of the IP version 4 packets, discovery, offer, request, acknowledgement, in IP version 6, you get to sound like a pirate because you'll be saying, SAR. It's solicit, advertise, request, reply. Request is the only name shared by a packet in these process, in DHCP on version 4 and version 6. One more big difference I want to share with you. Uh, DHCP version 6 does not send default router information to the client as DHCP version 4 does. Uh, the host gets that default routing information via NDP. We talked about that earlier as part of the router solicitation and acknowledgement. Uh, this is just in from the Department of Picking Nets, too. I just want to make this clear. When I say DHCP v4 or DHCP v6, that is not referring to the actual version number of DHCP. This is the commonly accepted way to write DHCP for IP version 4 and DHCP for IP version 6. On your exam, if a DHCP version is not mentioned, uh, they're talking about DHCP for IPv4. <sighs> okay, that's enough from the Department of Picking Nits. Let's talk about stateless DHCP. Now, stateful DHCP, also known as stateful auto configuration, it has a lot in common with DHCP version 4 as we've seen, but stateless DHCP is a brand new world. When stateless DHCP is in effect, really the hosts create their own IP version 6 addresses. Hey, we'll take that. That sounds like a pretty good deal. This is called Slack. Make your own jokes. But this is Stateless Auto Configuration, S-L-A-A-C. And it begins, actually, with some of the information the host got from the router as a result of the router solicitation and router acknowledgement messages that we looked at earlier. And some of that information in the RA includes the prefix and the prefix length. Hmm. Now, that information allows the host to create its own version 6 address. All the host needs to do is take its 64-bit interface identifier. There's that value again. You tack that onto the back of the 64-bit prefix. And what do we got? We got 128-bit valid and unique IP version 6 address. Well, we think it's unique. Hmm, let's look at that again. Valid and unique. We're, we're assuming it's valid. We're assuming it's unique. But it would be a really good idea to have somebody check. And actually, Dad's going to check that for us, and we'll talk about that on the very next video.